Welcome to the next part on our series uh, about the use of the Tomahawk in combat. Um, today I want to talk a little bit about offhand weapons. So not the Tomahawk as an offhand weapon, but using offhand weapons with the Tomahawk. So first thing which comes in mind, of course, is a long knife, like a bowie knife, uh, a dirk, or any other big knife. So a big knife is what is mostly associated as a sidearm. We often see this uh, tomahawk and knife, tomahawk and bowie knife. And this has not to be a very big knife, it can also be a bit shorter knife, that's no problem at all. Um, however, this is a very classical combination. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of a uh, big knife as an offhand weapon? So first of all, you can uh, hold it in two different positions, like a knife grip or saber, saber grip, or you can use this ice pick or dagger grip. Uh, with a dirt, I would prefer this. With a bowie knife, of course, I would prefer this. Um, so what you don't do with it, because obviously it doesn't have any good or bigger hand protection, even if it is uh, a D-guard bowie knife with a knuckle bow, it is not such a good idea to parry an incoming blow of the opponent's tomahawk directly because your hand is very much in danger. So personally, my approach here is that I use this as a second tool when this did its job. So in example, uh, someone attacks me with a cut number one, I use this kind of hooking parry and hook him away and once I close in, I use this instead of losing that and then using the tomahawk, but parrying, clearing the way and then going in. Of course this prevents also if you are attacking, you get cleared out of the way, your opponent wants to rush in and then you can use this for your defense while the tomahawk is still um, trapped. So what I would recommend to train first with this combination is in the saber grip and in the reverse grip doing your seven cuts and then bringing the dagger into play. So you start with cut number one, cut number two. Once you did cut number two, the thrust with the dagger comes forward. Now you can use different footwork. Now you do cut number three, dagger comes back. Cut number four, which can also be a block like a hanging guard. And the dagger comes forward with the thrust. And now cut number six. Cut number, uh, sorry, cut number 5, cut number 6, and the dagger comes into play again, cut number 7, and finish, okay? So, with a little bit more fluidity, like, like, uh, like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and again, you can do a different footwork. The same you can do in the reverse grip, you can go for 1, 2, slash, and now you have more options, step, three, four, upward slash, stepping down, five, six, horizontal slash, thrusting forward, cut number seven. So, of course you can do this also with the saber grip, but I think the reverse grip gives a little bit more playful options, in my opinion. And also, if I have to use this defensively, I, this is a dirt, of course, and as I used broadsword and dirt, as I said in our broadsword uh, touch lessons when I was talking about the dirt, that you should not do uh, active parry with that, but if you are fighting and then maybe you miss and your head is open for a counter, you use this as an emergency shield. Okay, For that it is really good. And of course you can do also kind of hooking and trapping motions which come into play. So, again, do cut one. Two slash thrust three four slash thrust five six slash thrust seven. Just one example. Okay. So um, I would not count this as an active parry weapon, except you have the tomahawk and fighting against the weapon like a small sword or a spadroon, so uh, or AP or something like that. So they can use cuts as well, but if they thrust at you, then you can use this to parry and counter with your uh, tomahawk, just like you would do with uh, a small sword and a, and a dagger. Okay, so he thrust at you, you parry, and you can go in for that. So you can adapt that, of course. 
I don't know if it's quite historical, but my preference would be a basket with a dagger, of course. So now I would have really well and good hand protection. Um, but I have to say, then the basket with a dagger, which can be kind of a smaller cutlass, would become my main weapon anyways, and I would use this as the offhand weapon. So the next option, uh, I don't know how historical it is, but it's practical, is when you have a tomahawk, you use the second tomahawk as the offhand weapon. So not really offhand weapons, now it's more like double weapons. But why not? You have uh, many possibilities and it's, it's great fun inspiring. Um, of course, you might think about um, you know, the Filipino martial arts double stick techniques and that is totally legend. So if you, if you do that, you can start to adapt on this, um, uh, with these patterns on this. From the broadside approach, um, I would try to think more about uh, double falchions or double broadswords or something like that. And again, you can switch the grips, okay? So both are kind of top heavy objects, so you have to take care. Uh, to not get too confused with it. With it. So I would uh, recommend to first start to do uh, some stick work and get used to the offhand weapon, like two weapons of the same size. Or you can also, if you don't have sticks, you can just turn your tomahawk and start to mess around a little bit with this and work uh, to get just used to it. Um, but then you can also use your training tomahawk or your real tomahawk and then you start to do parry and cutting patterns. So now the difficulty here is that you have to bring in the parry, um, the parries you do with the tomahawk, and then use the tomahawk offensively. So in example, attack cut number one comes. If you just try to parry static like here, you try to count it here like you would do with basket tilted dagger and the, and the backsword, you just maybe will get struck in your hand. So you have to train the Parry with the dagger, parrying away, uh, sorry, with a tomahawk, parrying it away, like with a hooking parry, a slapping parry, a back parry, and all these things. And then you have to bring in this for a counter, so like hooking parry counter, hooking parry counter, or it gets thrust to the belly, you parry here with a flat and counter. Okay, so one, one tomahawk does the defense, the other tomahawk does the offense. Best advice I can give you is when you want to train with two tomahawks, start only with one tomahawk in your, your uh, dominant hand and then switch and do all the training, all the stuff you want to do, all the techniques also with your left hand to get used to it. And then you start to do these patterns and start to work with um, two tomahawks. Is you don't have to hold them both always in the long grip, you can also put one in the half choke grip, which makes things interesting, or you can even go for the uh, short grip, full choke, and then use it to cover and then go in and then use this in close distance. So you can even do like this or like this, you can change the grips on the tomahawk quite nice. And of course, you could do also kind of a reverse grip, just I mean, be playful, okay. Just try this out, it is great fun, especially in spy. And if you have a tomahawk, same goes for a big knife. Talking about a knife and tomahawk throwing. Of course, if you have two tomahawks ready, you can go and fight with both together. And if you have to, you could also throw one uh, as a missile weapon. Of course, that works as well, not only in the movies, throwing tomahawks is great fun. So you could do that in combat as well. The next option is a touch or a shield in general. So, of course, a hand axe and a shield, we know this already from the Viking Age, from the Anglo Saxons, and all these things. Um, we know from the uh, medieval Scotland, there's often the description that they were using um, axes, long handed axes, but also hand axes together with shields. Now, we don't know how these shields exactly look, there are different theories about it, um, if they were heater shields or if they were early versions of the touch. And sometimes also they are just called a buckler. Um, so now maybe in, in the eyes of an English knight using a heater shield, a small round touch might be more like a buckler, I don't know. Um, but generally speaking, uh, a shield and a hand axe is a good combination. Okay? And as I said already in, uh, in the first video I made, um, here you can go and start training um, and do all the things we do with broadsword and touch 
But keep in mind, you have a shorter weapon, you have a different balance, and you have no hand protection. Speaking of hand protection, a very good thing to use together with Tomahawk, and again, not really historical, maybe, maybe historical, I don't care. It's fun, a good combination, a practical combination for modern HEMA training is, of course, the buckler and the tomahawk. Okay, because now, very good hand protection, you can cover yourself very well with the, um, with the buckler, and then you do let the tomahawk do uh, its work. Um, how about hand protection for the tomahawk? If you want to do some kind of medieval stuff like this, you're, this is the wrong address for you, okay, because I don't know anything about it or at least not enough to give you any advice. So I see this from a broadsword perspective. And in broadsword we use a backlit as a parry device, kind of static, having a big radius here, and then moving the weapon around. So I think maybe people doing side source, quality side source and such things will be more familiar with that. So um, using the, the, the buckler to cover and then using the dirk, uh, sorry, the uh, tomahawk to do all kinds of techniques and attacks. We will show this later maybe in some partner drills. Now with the buckler you can also do this kind of cutting patterns and use this as a punching device. So you start in kind of an outside guard and then have your, deck, your buckler forward and then you start to go, okay, cut number one, cut number two, punching forward with, with, with the buckler, okay, cut number three, cut number four, punching forward with the buckler, Cut number five, cut number six, punching forward with the buckler, cut number seven, punching forward with the buckler, and so on and so on. And of course, when you do low line attacks, which is a little bit tricky because the tomahawk is quite short, but if you come closer and be close enough to do low line attacks, not, not only to the legs but also here to the to the thigh or to the to the stomach, the groin and whatnot, then of course it's good to cover you against the blow. So it's good um, when you work like this. And you're fighting, you're using your snap cuts, your thrusts, and then you go for an attack, then you cover your head with your back. You can use any kind of offhand tool you're familiar with or what you can grab. I mean, maybe just have a capsule with you and your hand axe, and you can use this to some effect as a parry uh, weapon. Or you can also start thinking about, okay, this is a longer weapon, I use this as my main tool, or being quick with my main hand, and doing all kinds of cool stick moves. And then I bring this into play as a parry weapon and a deadly weapon to finish the affair. So, yeah, um, grab your tomahawk, grab an offhand weapon of choice and start to work through the drills and think about it. We'll also try to make some apartment drills with the offhand weapons, um, which might give you some inspiration what you can do on your own. But um, for now, just start to use um, the tomahawk with all the solo drills I showed you in the last video and just bring the um, offhand weapon into play. Ah! Yeah. 